Shares of Moderna and Pfizer both taking a hit on the back of that meeting. For more, let's bring in Michael Yee from Jefferies. You can tell us what to do with these stocks, Michael. Between this news and, and the news that the, that the vaccination rates, while, while they've happened fast, and that's a good thing, just are not where the Biden administration planned for them to be by July 4th at 70 percent. We're, what, in the still 50 percent, so high hesitancy levels. Does all of this change the, the economic picture, the investing picture around Moderna and Pfizer? Well, it's a great question, and I think it absolutely does, based on the fact that the information today about potential, you know, higher rates of adverse events, but more importantly, the uncertainty about boosters, which is revenue for next year and the year after, and all the all the revenues going forward are really the big questions, Sarah. So, you know, the stock uh, Moderna sports a ninety billion dollar market cap. And there's a lot of uncertainty about how much use will be in the future. So that's really the debate. And I think that's really the question on people's minds. But isn't the Moderna market cap predicated, Michael, on the, the promise of mRNA vaccines, which they've been working on for a long time, well beyond COVID-19, other viruses potentially, cancer is mentioned potentially. Isn't that the, the reason there's been such a huge bid there? It is. I would say it's both. I think there's a significant amount, if you want some specifics, more than half of the valuation certainly is on the idea that there will be some recurring tail, call it five or ten billion dollars versus 20 billion this year of COVID vaccines. And there's got to be five or ten billion dollars of others. Uh, flu, which data is coming later this year, and this will be a big topic for these stocks later this year and other viruses. So to get to 10 to $20 billion of recurring revenue to justify a $100 billion market cap with five-time sales is certainly part of the debate. Both of those things are absolutely the question going forward. What, what about the Delta variant, uh, Michael, and uh, which vaccines uh, are holding up better or worse against it? Does it just really just uh, mean even more that those who haven't been vaccinated yet should, whichever vaccine they can uh, get their hands on? Uh, that's absolutely the case, and that's why I think whether it's a read through today from the CDC panel, you know, encouraging people to continue to get vaccinated because the benefits of reduced transmission and infections and hospitalization outweighs the myocarditis risk. But the idea that, look, these variants will continue to be emergent out there, others could be coming. And so they do want people to get vaccinated to prevent that. So uh, I think that that risk out there continues well for it. I think that's certainly why we will continue to see some vaccinations. But there still remains a lot of hesitancy. And certainly as we get to 2022, since the infection rates are going down a lot, there's a lot of hesitancy to think about boosters next year. And I think that's really the question why the stock probably deserves to take a breather. Well, as Delta is on the rise globally, Michael, there, there are also uh, increasing evidence that the Chinese vaccines and the countries that relied on those Chinese vaccines early are not faring as well. Thinking of Bahrain and Seychelles, they had high, high amounts of their population vaccinated, and yet they're seeing a big resurgence in cases. Does that ultimately drive demand for a Pfizer and Moderna, which appears to be holding up better against these variants? Well, th this is the point. I think the clear conclusion, and that's part of why Moderna and BioNTech have been great performers this year, is that they are clearly the number one two vaccines, high efficacy great safety, and everybody should be using those. I think countries which did not are certainly seeing the negative effects of using inadequate vaccines. And I think the question is, if cases continue to evolve, if the case numbers, let's see, the curve, right, the curve continues to start to go up later this year, I think people will start to think about boosters, want to get boosters, and, uh, you know, visibility on revenues will, will, uh, will, will be there. I think right now people, at least investors I talk to, say, we don't see visibility on boosters, the case numbers are going down, and the stock supports a $90 billion market cap. So, look, I think there should probably be a pullback on the stock, and I'm telling you there'll be a debate on flu vaccines and some of these others later this year. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.